Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering section 3.42 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, uh, second edition. I'm going to move fast, but you can always rewind. Thumbs up and share if you appreciate what I'm doing. As always, uh, questions can go in a video response or comments below. Let's get started. So section 3.42 covers the monopole and dipole terms of this newly rewritten potential um, that contains the uh, multipole expansions. The first term is the monopole. It looks like this. Um, it's going to be 1 over r, and the integral is r prime to the zeroth, and p0, which is just 1, so all these terms disappear, and we have rho d tau, which simplifies to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, and this is just the total charge of the configuration, q over r. So, looking at this equation, Note that we only depend upon the total charge. We don't care where those charges are placed or how they're arranged. Um, and also, um, the potential varies only on how far we are, not from the charges or the center of mass of the charges, but from the origin, whatever origin we choose. The reason why this works is as we get farther and farther away from the origin, the distance of the uh, particular charges from the origin becomes less and less important. And that's really where these terms are useful is when we're far away from the origin. Let me highlight that. You'll note that pretty much all the higher order terms um, hopefully can be reduced to something that depends only on the distance of the point we're interested in from the origin. The dipole term, there's not much more to say on the monopole, mon monopole term. The dipole term uh, looks like this. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And this is when n equals 1. So we have 1 over r squared. 1 over r squared, excuse me. And it's going to be the integral of r prime. Uh, the first uh, Legendre is cosine, cosine of theta, uh, rho d tau. Okay, now if you look really hard at this rho d tau term, uh, I'm sorry, not that term, this term, the r prime cosine of theta, that could be rewritten as the simple function that is just r hat, that's the direction towards the point that we're interested in, and the dot product with um, r prime vector. Okay, That's the component that's pointing in that direction. Remember theta is the angle between r prime and the, the position vectors r. And so rewriting it that way, we can pull out the r hat, and we get this, this integral that looks like this. And we have r hat, which doesn't depend on anything inside the integral, times the integral of r vector, oh, dot the integral of r vector prime um, rho d tau. Okay? And that basically says the integral, this is the sum of all the vectors pointing to the, the charge times the charge itself. So it's it's like, it's almost, if, you, if you're thinking in mechanical, um, if you're thinking mechanically, this is almost like the the term that'll give you the center of mass, you know, if you, in some weird way, if you think about that. Um, so, and then you can rewrite that. This little chunk. Let's get it orange again. This little chunk here, we call that the dipole moment. It is a vector. Um, it has a magnitude and a direction, just like other vectors. And so now we can rewrite our v dipole as equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, 1 over r squared, r hat dot p, the dipole moment. So um, this is actually a really useful equation. Um, uh, once again, we've eliminated r prime. Um, we, we have a single value to describe the configuration of charges, the dipole moment. And we can calculate quickly um, how strong the potential is and in which direction it points. Uh, or I'm sorry, how strong the potential is, and then from the gradient of that we can get the electric field in which, which, which way it points. The, um, if we go back to that example we had earlier, where we were calculating the dipole moment, or we were calculating the potential of two point charges, this is example uh, 10, right? And we plug that in, we calculate the dipole moment of that configuration. We get that uh, the dipole moment is equal to uh, basically the integral of the vector pointing to the charge, we can just rewrite that as a sum of, 
you know, for each charge, QI, that's the, the that's the charge of the thing we're in, the, we're talking about, and the vector to the charge. Okay, and in this case for the the example ten, we had two charges, so we have both of them have the same magnitude, and one's opposite the other. Uh, basically, we have the r r plus vector, and then we're going to subtract the r minus vector because it, it's the negative charge there. And adding those together really just gives you s vector, where s vector points from the negative charge to the positive charge. So evidently, when you move farther and farther away from the origin, um, this dipole moment becomes more and more important. Um, no matter where it is, really. I mean, if if it's located far away from the origin then close by the other terms would be important but as you move farther and farther away only the dipole moment in this in this case and the dipole potential becomes important um, if, if you're wondering what I'm talking about it might help to think um, in terms of this so um, the the first term is the monopole term if there's no net charge this is always going to be zero the next term is this one that varies with 1 over r squared and the next term after this is the quadrupole term that it's 1 over r cubed, right? As you move farther and farther, this number um, becomes much, much larger than 1 over r cubed. And so eventually the dipole moment, the dipole potential is the only thing that matters. Um, now, uh, apparently, if we take a physical dipole, like we had there, we had a plus and a minus separated by a distance there and we brought their positions closer and closer together in this case we reduced s so it's smaller and smaller and smaller eventually the dipole moment would disappear but a curious thing happens is the quadrupole and octopole and those those different terms um, their moment so to speak decrease okay if you accordingly as you reduce this increase the charge you approach this pure dipole where the, the two charges for all intents and purposes occupy the same point in space even though they're negative charges um, they're opposite of each other and the, the, you produce this beautiful potential that depends only on the dipole moment the, the, the dipole potential so it's a it's a beautiful um, kind of summation of what happens in the extremes um, as you're far away from again as you're far away from the origin uh, dipole moments are vectors and they add accordingly. Let's suppose you had this configuration where you had a plus charge here, and another plus charge there, and a minus charge and a minus charge. And they're all, e they're all equally apart from each other, so it forms a square. Right? So here you have one dipole moment pointing up, and here you have one dipole moment pointing down. As long as these are close together, which is true if you're far, far away from here, then the dipole moments add together. And in this case, this configuration has a dipole moment of zero. Okay, they just cancel itself out. This is in fact a quadrupole. So in this configuration, we'd, we'd have to look at the potential due to the quadrupole and not the dipole. Anyway, uh, thanks for your time and I hope you enjoyed it.